All right, everyone, it's time for The Occult, video 206, Judge Most People Less and Leaders Much More. I think this is something it's vaguely philosophical, but it fits into a spiritual framework specifically because of the existence of, you know, some high priest, uh, a guru, a self-proclaimed sorcerer, grand magician who tell you how to run your life. People even give, uh, this is interesting, I've spoken about charlatans within the occult, which psychics tend to be... People who do like the tarot card and the astrology sort of, oh, I'll read your palms and tell you your future. Okay, that's interesting. It's interesting as a, a mock-up of occultism, but for the most part, most of them aren't uh, practicing any traditional fortune-telling, let alone uh, have any actual power. People entrust uh, their lives, in many cases, to people who self-proclaim authority. And this is a, a Shakespearean sort of thing within the occult, too. If you stress that you have authority... Mock yourself up as though you have it. You gain it. You can gain it as long as you're convincing. A part of leadership is literally nothing more than being a good method actor. It's literally nothing more than that. When we think about the behavior of people throughout time who have amalgamated power, a lot of it's a floor show. It's how they dress. It's how they act. It's what they say and how they say it in many cases. Now, it's a perceived authority. They're still a perfectly fallible mortal. In many cases, they're, they're the inferior of most of the people that they're leading, especially if they're doing anything within the military. You think of, for instance, Trump. He leads, you know, the main world power. He's a pudgy older dude. You think about that, and yet he has that charisma that allows him to stand up on stage, and through his gesticulation, his use of his hands and so forth, he can basically mesmerize thousands or tens of thousands of people. Um, quite good at it, by the way. Uh, even lesser world leaders tend to have this capability. They have to convince others that they are, are due to lead them. The problem is, people are naturally judgmental, which itself isn't a problem. But they tend to aim their judgment quite harshly at their fellow man without aiming it harshly enough at those that are actually leading them. And again, in many cases, doing so with, with little more than just a floor show. And they just say, well, I have power. I'm the big man. You should follow me. In many cases, they're not physically the big man. They're not necessarily intellectually superior to many other people within society. The hope is that they tend to be intelligent, uh, that they tend to make good decisions. They tend never to be the most rational or the most intelligent or the most strong or the most good at military strategy. In, in a properly run Western style sense, usually, therefore, you have compartmentalization. You have uh, people that are, that are part of a sub-meritocracy advising or making decisions on a lesser level, sort of helping that person along, and they tend to be little more than a figurehead. They do the diplomacy. They're good at, they're good at having a personality. At least, again, that's the hope. That's why we didn't have a President Mitt Romney or, or President Jeb Bush, to be honest, or President Hillary Clinton. Yeah, what's my personality? I'm going to yell at you until you do what I do. Uh, to what I want you to do. You know, wonderful times, uh, Hillary. I'm speaking within a political context, but within a spiritual context, this is even more important, I would say. Uh, if you believe in any realm of spirituality, you believe in an afterlife, reincarnation, maybe you believe in karma, uh, anything, any sort of judgment after death, uh, again, afterlife, hell and heaven, or, or David Chan, or any of these other things. You should be very careful at who you're trusting <laughs> to give you spiritual information. The problem is, People who are looking for those answers. You know, they go through their midlife crisis or whatever. Like, oh my God, I haven't accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. What should I do? They go to some guru uh, who will generally charge them large sums of money. They go to some retreat with a guru or they consult the shaman or the priest or something on advice on what to do. If we look, though, throughout history, what are most of those people? They're total fucking charlatans. Like you can imagine, back when the, the Black Plague was around, why do you think the flagellants uh, arose and then had to be killed off and suppressed? It was because the priests couldn't answer properly people's dilemma, which is if, if a God is loving, if God is true and stuff, isn't this the end of the world? Like, uh, you know, the priests can't answer that. They're like, oh, my child, just have faith. No, you can't stop the plague. Your faith healing isn't working. Uh, my kids died of the plague. My wife died of the plague. Most of my neighbors died of the plague. It's like, now I got all this land and stuff, but everyone I know is dead. Uh, where's where's your God, priest? Uh, I need to know that. The Pope flees uh, to, to his uh, sort of remote palace. I think it was the Avignon Popes at the time. Uh, and surrounds himself with braziers of fire in order to ward off the, the miasmus and so forth. It looked like even he had lost his faith. Didn't uh, The priests wouldn't even give communion to people anymore. If they're sick, they won't even give them last rites. This sort of thing lays bare uh, the, the nature of some of these spiritual paths is basically being dead. And I, and I do believe that, and I say that in a literal sense. Yes, there are plenty of people who practice spiritual paths that are demonstrably false. Uh, they're not like the occult, which is more of a seeking of truth, 
uh, seeking of what's hidden, uh, attempting to quantify things, asking questions. Uh, it's, it's more skeptical in that framework. It's more about asking than presuming. It's more about speculating and testing than it is judging. It's almost quasi-scientific in some ways, and therefore can coexist with it within that spiritual framework. Mainline religion tends not to be able to. The problem is mainline religions, they posit, here are the rules, here are the truths, here's who you will follow. Within that framework, it can be very abusive. But if you're always encouraged to question things, or go it alone in some elements, and, and you know the religion or spiritual path is more of a framework around which you build your own spirituality, it's harder for there to be abuse. Now, that's not to say that there aren't cults that spring up from time to time. Of course there are. Uh, not a cult, but rather a cult. Uh, that happens uh, commonly. We think of... Um, I think of even even atheistic groups have like Jim Jones. I think well, wasn't the uh, People's Temple massacre there? Was the, the anniversary of it was like a week ago, right? Where they drank the cyanide grape juice and and crazy shit. I think almost a thousand people killed themselves uh, along with you know Jim Jones, their leader. He was more of a communist and an atheist who used Christian trappings to disguise the fact that he was a full-on Marxist. Uh, but you know you have that sort of movement. It can be very abusive, even in the absence of theism even in the absence of anything more than, again, a mock-up of spirituality. But it tends to be more abusive in a mainline religion. When you've got some priest and you're being told, this is the man of God, you must listen to them. Uh, or the rabbi, or the imam, or, or some guru or something, sad guru over in India. Uh, when you have one of these figures that claims godhood or spiritual power or something, they're giving people answers. The problem is that their own physical and spiritual existence is still separate from these other people. They can't give them true answers all the time. They'll try, especially for a fee. The problem is they don't even know everything about these people. It's like when people uh, joke around, about, like, like, um, what are they? Uh, like people who do, uh, they, they past life regression. Uh, or they talk to the dead, supposedly. That's the more famous example. Uh, these people are tricked over and over again by people who are skeptical of their power, and they'll go up and feed them a bullshit story. Oh, yeah, I'm here about my dead sister. And, and they don't have a sister, and the person's telling them all these details. And they're like, surprise, this person doesn't exist. They usually will try to cover it up and say, no, 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 I really mean your mom. or something. I really mean my sister. I'm talking about some other person in the audience who's been carefully planted and has a bullshit story of their own. Uh, this happens all the time. Psychics do it constantly. A psychic will... will basically sit there and bounce ideas off of you. It's sort of like uh, taking your own inner dialogue and uh, making it external. It can be therapeutic, there's nothing necessarily naturally wrong with it, but it isn't a real occult art. So it's quite interesting that people delve into it. I think, uh, unfortunately, it seems that people are attracted to spiritual forms that are either much more over the top or much more boring and abusive. They're like highly standardized and legalistic. It's sort of that element of man that wants to be controlled. Sort of a little bit of a philosophical masochism. Uh, the occult isn't for everyone. The occult is for people who want to be individualistic or feel an urge to be individualistic, as opposed to people who want to be told. They want to be given a, a cookie cutter sort of ideology to follow after. That's not the occult at all. And if you want that, it's like I, I tell people about aspects of the occult, including with this video. But you can take it or leave it. If you're going to be in the occult, you can come to a totally different conclusion. It's a great thing, I think. You know, it's sort of a Luciferian mindset, I suppose. That's about all. Peace out.